I come back with the hose, I'm like, crap, this little fire circle is getting bigger. Hey guys, welcome to Sunset Acres. I'm Brandon. Thank you for joining the channel today. Today I'm going to talk about some of the craziest stories that's happened out here on the farm. That's crazy! And maybe you guys can learn from our mistakes. Y'all come along. All right, so I got some crazy stories for you guys today. I mean, it is just crazy what happens out here. We've been out on the farm three, two, three years now, maybe longer, I don't know, I think about two, three years. And we've just seen some crazy stuff. We've participated in crazy stuff and we've learned. I grew up in a, a smaller city and I never really dealt with animals. So I was always wanting to come out and live on a farm. So that's why we eventually started our farm. But listen to this. We've had some crazy stories, okay? First off, out here on Sunset Acres, our friend calls it Wind Hill. Um, and I'm about to explain why, because it is so bad. But first, <laughs> I actually bought this beef jerky. Uh, a guy I like to watch. Matter of fact, when we were getting into doing uh, animals and all that, um, we watched his channel and they came out with beef cake jerky. But what is, I mean, the packaging looks sweet, right? Look at that. Isn't that cool? But what's cool about it is actually, um, it's pork teriyaki. I've never had pork jerky. I've always had beef jerky. And so anyways, while I tell these stories, I'm going to stand here and give you my first impression on this jerky while I tell these stories because you always need a good snack when you're telling a story, right? So anyways, let me try this for the first time. Okay, I just opened it. Dang, that made my mouth water. Right, let's see. Let's see how it tastes. Okay. Wasn't bad. It tastes like chicken. Oh, good. I don't even know if I would recognize this pork jerky. Not bad. It's really tender. Got good taste. Yeah. Give it a 10 out of 10. It's good. What about Sweet Baby Ray's? And it's about as tender as Sweet Baby Ray's. And that's what Jack's I like. Jack's is good, too. Mm-hmm. I'm not big on Jack's Lynx. Yeah, Mm-hmm. Great taste. Anyways, back to the story. So, well, dang. A friend of ours calls it wind hill out here. I'm about to tell you why. So it was one Saturday morning. I didn't even know it was going to rain or nothing. I mean, I wasn't even paying attention to the weather. Me and Katie was sleeping, sound asleep. It's like 7 a.m. This bad storm came through here. And we don't know if it was a wind gust. What do they call that? I don't know, a gust of wind. I forget what they call it. Like that strong wind. We don't know if it was that, if it was a tornado. I'm convinced it was a tornado, but what happened was, while we were sleeping, right behind our house, the chief had this kennel. There was this metal kennel out there. We'd lock him up at night because he'd wander off the property and disappear. And we're trying to keep him from the highway. That's good. We're trying to keep him from the highway. So we put him in his kennel at night. <clears throat> well, it had this tarp on it, and we never had this issue, but we didn't have it bolted down to the ground or like anchored. And so he had his little dog house within the kennel, and then he had the big 10 by 10 kennel and his, um, his roof on it. Well, uh, this wind came through, and man, like if you've watched some of our older videos, I think I threw it on one of those videos. Um, yeah, it was the one where we were spraying pesticides. Yeah, eliminate one serious problem. Go back and watch it. I'll put it up here. But what happened was um, this uh, tornado came through and picked up Chief's kennel. And see, we had um, chain link on, on the inside bottom of it buried in the dirt so he wouldn't dig out. <clears throat> and um, it broke off from it but picked up the kennel and it literally threw it like almost over 20 acres. I mean, it threw it all the way across the property. And Chief was unharmed. 
it ripped. He had a little igloo doghouse within there that he could shelter in and go to bed at night too. And it ripped the top off of that and threw it and then all that was left was the bottom of the igloo and chief standing there looking confused like what the heck just happened and so my sister-in-law lives on on our little uh uh, farm out here we all got we call a little compound she called us up she's like uh brandon i think a tornado just came through and we're like half asleep like what and so we woke up and sure enough i mean that pin was crumbled up it's all it was all the way across the property I mean, stuff blowing everywhere. And some people said, well, it might have been like a strong wind or I forget what they call it. But I think it was a tornado because there was a chicken coop that wasn't anchored down right near that area. But it was a little further off. It could have easily got ripped up and thrown. Um, But it didn't, you know. So, needless to say, the first thing we learned out here on farming is anchor your crap down. Like, don't. Leave anything out there that could blow away because, I mean, what if that would have hit a house? What if some Abby was walking outside and she got whacked with it? Anything could happen. So, we, first thing, anchor your stuff down. We learned that mistake. Uh, but Chief was safe. He was good. Second craziest thing that's happened out here on the farm. I don't even want to talk about it. Like, it stresses me out every time. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 But what happened one time was we had this burn barrel out back, okay, and me and Katie got home, and I had in my mind, hey, I'm going to burn these boxes or, or whatever I had. I was going to go and burn it down, all that. Well, keep in mind, okay, winter comes, winter kills grass. Grass then proceeds to be dry. And so I had a bunch of dead, dry grass, and we got Pensacola of a hay. If you watch our videos when we do hay, great videos, go check it out, but... It's dead grass, you know, and I'm not thinking, so my burn barrel's got all these holes around it to help with ventilation, so it really burns good. Well, I put these boxes in, and I push it down, and it's me and Annika, my niece, she's real little, and I push it down, and she's back there watching me, and okay, number two, okay, on a farm, one thing, make sure you got a hose if you're burning something, make sure you got access to water, don't do it without access to water. Needless to say, what ends up happening is I go to push down these boxes in this burn barrel that are on fire with a shovel, and what happens is fire and flames come out the side of it. And so anyways, it started burning the dead grass. Well, Annika goes, that's, you know, like, that's not good. And I'm like, I got it. Don't worry. And so I'm walking off. I'm going to get the hose. I come back with the hose. I'm like, crap, this little fire circle is getting bigger. You know, and so matter of fact, like, it kept getting bigger, and I could not stop it from getting bigger. And my fat tail, man, like, okay, I've lost a little bit of weight, but I was like 470 around this time. My fat tail, I'm running, I'm trying to get hoses, and all it is is me and Annika out there, and I'm trying to spray this thing out, the fire's moving and spreading, and Annika, she goes like this, she goes, well, this is getting out of hand pretty quick. And I'm like, no, it's not. I got this. I got it. And she's like, just quiet, you know. And then finally I'm like, Annika, go get somebody. I need help. And then so she ran off. And then I didn't know what to do because this fire is spreading our whole field. Like we got five acres. I mean, I mean, it, it was like half an acre, quarter of an acre or whatever. That was a lot to me. But when it's spreading and you can't get it under control, like I was up the creek without a paddle and a hole was in the boat. And so anyways, I holler, I'm like, Katie, and she hears me like seven acres away over at Pat's house, and they finally come over like, what's going on? Well, this whole crazy thing happened where they got the golf cart, and they get these buckets, and they're like, all right, we're going to put them on the back of the golf cart and fill it up with water, and they fill up all these buckets of water on the golf cart, and they go to take off because they're now going to go pour it on the fire and all the buckets fall off and water goes out everywhere and so we had no no water so they had to refill it all the while this fire is spreading matter of fact katie's eyebrows got singed like i don't even know how that happened but the way the flames was going burning this dead grass and she was bent down pouring water it singed her eyebrows so like this i mean this happened like it had to have happened within five minutes it got out of hand so quick and so this whole field is starting to burn. And I'm like, oh, God, they're going to kill me. 
I'm like, Lord, help me, please, Jesus. And I'm trying to put it out. And I'm like, Katie, you got to call the fire department. So she's on line with them. She's like, do I need to send them, Brandon? I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, hold on. Let me call our neighbor. And I called our neighbor up. And, he, and sure enough, he answered. And he said, well, what's the, you know, what's the matter? I was like, man, we got a fire. I need you. Can you get your tractor? He's like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm like, if you got a bucket on it, fill it with water. I don't know. And he's like, I'll be right there. And sure enough, man, he came on that tractor shooting over here, kind of like the the lion out of Narnia, you know? <laughs> that dude shot over here. And uh, anyways, he had his box blade, and he drug it all out. So I say all this to say that. Make sure you got a hose nearby if you're burning. You know, always um, expect, anticipate what the worst scenario could be so you can be prepared for it. Like, I, I hope for the best, but I expect the worst sometimes. Like, you know, like, be ready just in case. And I was not ready. And matter of fact, I haven't really burned any boxes since then. And that's been like a year and a half ago. Like, it scarred me. Um, we had a little hot tub spa. I was on my four-wheeler, and I took a big five-gallon bucket, just yanked it out of the spa and, like, pulled my arm. I mean, we were stressed and freaking out. Um, but we drug it out. And matter of fact, our other neighbor shows up who I hadn't even met at the time yet. And he jumped off his side by side and he's stomping it out with his boots, you know? Okay. So the first thing I said, make sure you strap your stuff down out here. The second thing, always be prepared. So have water if you're burning. Uh, the third thing is live near good neighbors. You know, it just helps when you have friendly neighbors. And so anyways, we worked that whole situation out, dude. It was so so crazy like um oh my gosh it was nuts all right last thing we got here i want to share with you guys is uh predators when you're homesteading you got a problem with predators well we got some crazy stories on predators matter of fact um, we had a fox that would come near our backyard all the time um we we haven't caught them uh catching a fox is hard only thing we've caught them on is a camera. Like, we, you can't catch them in a trap. I mean, I've heard there's certain things you can do, but we got dogs out here on the property, um, and so we didn't want them to get caught in a trap or eat anything bad or, you know, all that stuff. We don't want to poison. So we've had a fox that passed through. Well, I'll never forget, you know, one night over near the shed, uh, something kept going near Pat's shed. And so anyways, one night I put a trap out there, and after a week, guess what we caught? Yeah, that's right. We called a possum. You know, we live near Walsall, Florida. That is the possum capital. Matter of fact, if you're watching this and you ain't from this area, I'm going to blow your mind. They have a possum festival out here. Okay? Like, they celebrate possums. Matter of fact, when you see a dead possum in the road, half the time it's pointing towards Walsall because that's where the festival is. They don't eat possums no more. I mean, I've heard some people eat it. I don't eat no possum. Um, but they have a possum festival. I mean, they literally got a parade. Uh, matter of fact, the community club we have here, the development club, they do an amazing job putting it on. Like, it's a huge event for that town. But anyways, we call it a possum. Um, one thing, make sure you, if you, if you don't want to kill them, uh, make sure you release them far enough away. And I, I'm talking about, like, miles and miles away. Like, put them somewhere else, you know. I mean, some of you may say, well, Oh, well, why don't you just release them? Well, the reason you don't want to release them is because possums will kill your chickens. They eat your eggs and disturb your nest. And so you don't want to release them near your house again because what's going to happen? That's right. They're going to come back. So you want to release them up the road. I mean, that, that's a little bonus there for you. You're welcome. If you catch a predator, either kill it or release it very far away. Do not put it back at your house. Um, I, I don't care. I mean, I'm like, if I'm putting it far away, I'm giving it a chance to live versus me going ahead and KOing it, you know? So anyways, we had a possum, but, um, we've had multiple issues with predators, but this story real, real quick right here, like, oh my gosh, it was crazy. So one night we've been trying to get this fox, right? And so Katie, um, Katie was, uh, at the front door and she looked out the glass and we had just came inside after putting up our dogs. And we put them in their kennel because we didn't want them to wander. Matter of fact, that's why we wanted to fence in the property so we can let them wander and just enjoy themselves and not protect the property, obviously. Well, Katie looks out the window and she's like, Brandon, I can't move. There's a fox and he's looking right at me. And I'm like, a fox? I'm like, oh, crap. You know, because I'm like, we just came inside and she's like, he's staring right at me. So I went, to my, I went and got my gun 
And I didn't even have it cocked in. I went around the corner. And as soon as I peeked around that corner, that dude looked at me. And I mean, in the moment of me cocking my gun, he was disappeared. Like, they are so quick and smart and cunning. So, I'm going to say, you got to be prepared when you're trying to catch a predator on your property. Uh, matter of fact, um, that I'm aware of, we have not lost anything to foxes. We've actually lost it to, like, hawks. You know, we've lost birds to hawks. Um, but we haven't lost it to a fox. But my neighbor, um, I mean, he's had a rooster disappear in broad daylight, tons of chickens. My other neighbor, tons of animals dying, cats, chickens, guineas. You know, I swear guineas like attract predators, it seems like. But um, that fox never, like, attacked our stuff that we know of. Uh, but we did, all right, this is the last story, okay? Y'all want one more bonus story? I'm going to give you one last one. This one was crazy. Please, no, no, no! Uh, and it, it's actually sad. Um, we did have a bad predator problem, to which this day we don't know what killed them. But um, uh, G, uh, Pat, she had some cats over there. And she's had these cats for years. These cats have done great out here. Um, I mean, one night on the camera, it moved so quick we couldn't even see what it was. Uh, looked like it attacked her cat and they just disappeared. And so she actually lost, I think, two or three cats that week to whatever predator this was. And a lot of people said, oh, a fox ain't going to attack a cat. Um, we've seen pictures of coyotes. But what was crazy was they literally came up to the house and snatch that cat and you know that's what freaks me out because we don't know what it is so we actually wanted to do a hunting night and see if we could catch them we've actually posted up one night out there and no coyotes or nothing but every now and then we'll hear coyotes in the distance um but we're we think either a bobcat or some coyote got it um so anyways man like a couple things on the property i'm just going to sum it up for you if you're farming a homestead, and these were crazy. Number one, on a farm, make sure your stuff is strapped down, you know, anchored. If you got anything that could blow away, make sure it's anchored down. Two, always be prepared. If you're burning, make sure you got water nearby, okay? This will save you the hassle. I burnt a huge amount of my acreage. <laughs> it freaked me out. I was stressed. I'm still stressed thinking about it. Three, I don't even remember what number three was. Number three, I'm just going to say, make sure you, if you got a flock, if you got farm animals that you love, make sure you got some other animals that will guard them. You know, we got uh, our livestock guardian dogs now, um, German shepherds. We got everything you can think of out here. Um, that I'm just saying, if a coyote shows up now, it's going to get KO'd. Like, if a fox shows up, it's done. I'm telling you what, Bailey, our German Shepherd, that girl will run 30 miles an hour no time. I know you're like, 30 miles an hour? Yeah, 30 miles. Like, I've tracked her tail. Like, she she throws those ears back, and she's like, Lightning McQueen, like, that girl's gone. So, thank you guys for jumping on here. I hope you got something out of it. Man, this jerky, uh, it's not bad. I'm about to go tear up some more. I never had pork jerky. If you've had pork jerky, comment below. Let me know what you think about it. But uh, beef jerky, man, it ain't bad. I'm, okay, one ounce uh, is 100 calories. Um, I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, one ounce, 100 calories. It's got 10 grams of protein. So I'm like, man, it's pork jerky right there. It, it tastes good. I feel like I still have the taste of it somewhat in my mouth after the fact, though. So I can't. I don't know. It's teriyaki. I mean, it's not a bad taste. Y'all go get you some. Let me know what you think. But hey, if you've hung out this long, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. But most importantly, I want you guys to comment your craziest story below because I would love to hear it. And maybe I can learn something from what you went through too. See y'all next time. Thanks for jumping on with Sunset Acres.